Welcome to Tech Brothers. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to install SQL Server 2014. Installation of SQL Server 2014 is not much different from installation of SQL Server 2012. Um, the things that we require um, in order to install SQL Server 2014, I have written down here. The first thing that we need is media file uh, containing setup of uh, SQL Server 2014. Um, it could be ISO file or if you have a DVD, uh, that's well and good. Uh, but uh, the ISO file, I'm, I'm going to install uh, enterprise uh, version of SQL Server uh, 2012. Uh, I'm sorry, 2014. So if you uh, if you don't have MSDN subscription, I have downloaded the ISO file from uh, M my MSDN uh, subscription. Uh, if you don't have that, you can go to Microsoft website and you can download uh, SQL Server 2014 evaluation version uh, of Enterprise. The second thing that we need um, that is a Windows feature .NET Framework 3.5. So um, this is very important. Uh, the reason it's important because if you don't install or add this feature to Windows, um, right in the end of installation, 2014 or 2012 um, will let you go through the installation. But right before it completes, it errors out. The installation is not complete and you get an error and the error is a bit confusing uh, the resolution to that error is really to install dotnet framework 3.5 uh, prior to installation of sql server 2014 i have a separate video uh, that shows exact error and the resolution um, and the installation features uh, we're we're gonna in, in this demo we're gonna, going to install database engine analysis services r reporting services and management tool really uh, the, uh, the basic uh, installation of uh, SQL Server 2014 uh, there are other features that's available um, I am going to uh, put a separate video for those features and I'm going to because the uh, installation and configuration of those um, features r require uh, a bit more time and that's why I decided to put it in a separate video so I'll be adding those features after I install SQL Server 2014 here um, if you wanted to follow that how to install those features um, and configure those features you can follow my other videos so I have uh, downloaded ISO file uh, when you download ISO file from Microsoft or MSDN subscription, you can't see really the uh, setup files. So you have to convert that into a drive. Um, you can um, Windows 8.1 um, uh, has a feature. If you right click on ISO file, it'll let you mount that. So let's uh, uh, let's go through the installation. Here's my ISO file that is a, a SQL Server um, 2014 Enterprise Edition 64-bit. Uh, uh, I'll right click on that and mount it. It'll mount it to the next available uh, drive in the system. So you can see the setup file now. Um, you right click on setup and run as administrator. It is going to take a, a minute just because I'm doing it on my laptop. Um, if you have a beefy server or uh, your laptop is pretty beefy, it's not going to take a long time. But uh, for this demo, um, I'm using my laptop, so it's, it's going to take uh, a few seconds. Uh, install SQL Server or if you're planning to upgrade SQL Server 2012 to 2014, this is, uh, uh, this is your friend right here. Uh, you can run uh, uh, Upgrade Advisor and uh, see if uh, every prereq and uh, all the all the things that you need in in order to upgrade from 2012 to 2014 are there so uh, i'm gonna skip that because uh, we're uh, just uh, doing brand new installation uh, we're uh, going to install a uh, sql server in uh, standalone mode <clears throat> i'll click on that if you see here um, there are two options one is to install SQL Server in standalone mode and other is a cluster, uh, failover cluster I have other videos that will show you how to install SQL Server in cluster mode um, and but right now in this uh, this installation we're gonna go ahead and go ahead with the SQL Server standalone installation 
So click on that. Um, I'm going to check uh, some rules um, against the operating system that you have. If uh, they are not met, it will give you error right now. And he, this is a screen that uh, if you wanted to use Microsoft Update to check for updates, uh, even though it's recommended, guys, I don't really use that because whenever uh, there are updates, I would like to first see what it, it what the impacts of uh, those updates are before I install it. If you check this, this is is gonna um, uh, check it and and keep bothering you. Uh, so I usually leave it alone. This is same thing that we haven't checked that, so it's not gonna it's gonna it's gonna ignore that part and it's telling you that that's not recommended so we're fine with that uh, install setup files uh, in this demo it's fine to see the warnings but if you're doing in production you need to look at the the warnings uh, because there could be an issue in production environment um, but if you're doing uh, even in other uh, dev and test environments, you should really look at the warning. But for this demo, I'm not going to worry about that uh, since this is not error. In case of error, uh, it won't let you go next. So if there is error that you see in here, you have to fix it before you click next. So um, I'm, I'm going to install SQL Server feature installation. So click next. Here we're going to choose the components that we wanted to install. So we're going to do database engine services, which is, uh, um, and we're also going to uh, install replication, full text, data quality services. We're we're going to leave it alone. We're not going to um, install that. We'll install it in, uh, later on. Analysis services, reporting in native mode. Um, And here is the, the directory where it's going to install. Uh, in my laptop, I don't have any other drive, uh, but uh, you can change your drive um, for, for this if you have uh, other drives available in your server or um, in your home network. Click Next. Here it asks you that whether you wanted to uh, go with the default instance name, which is uh, MS SQL Server. Um, it depends on your requirement. You can leave it alone, just a default instance, but I'm going to use it as a named instance, which is Tech Brothers SQL. If, if you click on instance ID, it is going to pick up the ID that you just gave the named instance and it'll show you that the SQL Server directory is going to be this, analysis services directory is going to be this, and reporting services directory is going to be this. So you click next. Here, um, if you're um, in your domain, uh, working for your organization, they have a domain and you have a, a service accounts, usually all the, all the organizations uh, in uh, the DBAs have a checklist to use a, a separate service account for SQL Server agent, a, se a separate service account for SQL Server database engine, analysis services, reporting services, uh, so forth, but I don't. I'm not connected to any domain right now, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm not, I'm just gonna um, use the default accounts. But if you use a service account, you would uh, as soon as you will change this, it'll ask you the password. So you need to know that if you're using service account, you need to know the password for that account. So you need to provide the password uh, here. Collation, if you're, um, especially for the folks overseas, if you're not in the United States, and if your requirements are that you wanted to use a, a different collation than default, the default collation uh, uh, is case insensitive. 
so uh, I'm gonna keep it uh, that way but if you need to change it you can change it during installation or you can change it after the installation as well and I'll show you how here the server configuration uh, the uh, authentication mode in SQL Server there are two authentication modes one is Windows authentication mode and other is mixed mode which means SQL Server authentication mode and Windows authentication mode if you keep the Windows authentication mode you cannot create any SQL Server user so um, you can change these modes later on as well but um, um, I would recommend you always uh, use the mix mode. As soon as you click on the mix mode, it's going to ask you the uh, uh, SA password, system administrator password, and uh, also you can add up here uh, what accounts that you wanted uh, on this SQL Server instance as a sys, sys admin. So I click on mix mode, provide the SA password. This should be strong. And I'm going to add the current user. If you have more users that you wanted to add as sysadmin, you can click add here and add those users. Data directories, this is very important again. Um, you need to have your system databases separate from your user databases. So uh, depends on your um, storage, you can uh, provide that path. I would recommend you to keep your user database data files separate than your user database log files and same with tempdb um, if you can afford more storage uh, always configure tempdb um, a bit more than any other database because this is the most busy database when when sql server runs backup directory uh, you can use um, storage that's not very expensive uh, for backup directory because the, the backups are going to be there and um, um, that'll be fine not to use um, a really uh, expensive storage <clears throat> file stream if you wanted to enable the file stream depends on your requirement for for transaction uh, SQL access you can enable it I'm gonna leave it disabled for this demo purposes so we're gonna click on next this is the analysis services um, what uh, SQL Server mode, analysis services mode you wanted to choose. Multidimensional and data mining mode is pretty slick. It will let you do the data mining as well as uh, uh, all the OLAP cubes and everything that you wanted to do with them uh, for business intelligence. You can do that. Uh, you can also use a tabular mode uh, using um, Excel add-ins and, and other stuff with analysis services. So right now it's asking you that uh, who is going to be the admin for analysis services. You can um, add the current user. Um, if you're connected again with your AD, then uh, you can select any users who is going to be the analysis services administrator. Uh, same with the data directories for um, analysis services. Uh, you can you can change this later on uh, but uh, since I don't have any other drive I'm gonna keep it uh, default <clears throat> this is reporting services um, it's asking you that if you wanted to install and configure at the same time uh, I, my recommendation to every everyone is that uh, just install reporting services don't configure it during the installation you can configure it later and that's the uh, same thing I'm going to do um, I'm not going to configure uh, reporting services in this video however I'll, I'll configure it um, later it's going to show you the summary uh, what you what what's already installed uh, mostly they are the prereq if you're installing SQL Server uh, brand new but let's say that you install this SQL Server one instance and you wanted to install another instance uh, then there there would be some features that's already installed and it'll tell you up here that's already installed and also the feature that you're going to install right now um, this this file can be accessed at following location right here uh, or you can uh, really uh, copy paste and uh, save this file so that you know what you installed 
and where you install even though you can look at it later but just for the sake of looking at summary if I click install uh, it's gonna install SQL Server uh, it's gonna take time I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back uh, once the installation is completed if I run into any issue um, I'll share that issue with you and resolution to it so I'm going to uh, click on install it's going to take a little bit of time so I'm going to uh, pause the video once it's completed I'll come back to this um, I hope this uh, this video helps we're back with the successful installation of SQL Server 2014 uh, as you can see all the features that we have selected during installation they are installed successfully let's fire up a, a management st a studio and see if we can connect to SQL Server right now I'm gonna open up management studio when you first time open Management Studio, it takes a little bit of time. And here's our instance that we installed. I'm, I'm going to keep the authentication mode Windows authentication. So I'm going to connect. There it is. Uh, SQL Server is online. Um, agent is online. Sometimes when you install SQL Server brand new uh, and keep uh, agent services on manual, uh, usually it's uh, not started. You can right click on agent and start the agent. Thank you for watching. I hope it helps.